banking industry is at the cusp of a revolution. The Reserve Bank of India has recently licensed 23 niche banks and even granted licenses to two universal banks after a gap of almost over a decade in fact. And of these two new universal banks, Bandhan Bank started its operations in August and the second winner, which is IDFC Bank, will be starting its banking operations on the 1st of October. And I have with me the man at the moment, uh, the Executive Vice Chairman and Managing Director of IDFC Bank, uh, Dr. Rajiv Lal, thank you so much for joining us. Um, let me first start by asking you about the tagline of the bank, Banking Hatke. It begs the question, what are you doing so differently from the rest of the players that already exist in the system? Well, many, many things yes. which will unveil themselves in the fullness of time. Mm -hmm. But the most important, I think, message both internally to uh, all employees um, within IDFC Bank and to the market that we are trying to address mm -hmm. is that uh, it's an attitudinal change. Mm -hmm. It's uh, an attempt um, and a goal and ambition to set new benchmarks for how service is delivered by any bank. Okay. The biggest feedback we got in preparing for the bank mm -hmm. from the general customer community mm -hmm. was that nobody likes bankers. Not entirely surprising. How can you be in a service industry, mm -hmm. which is what banking is, and not be liked by your customer? Yeah. So banking hutke is just to remind ourselves and to signal to everybody else that we intend to be and like no other bank and deliver a service standard like no other bank. Okay, I'll dwell a little more about your service standards later, but first if you could tell us, how will you ensure profitability? You're starting a bank, you're transitioning uh, from an infrastructure lender into a banking that's high cost of operations. You have to build your deposit franchise from scratch. Yeah. There is a high cost of funds. How will you ensure good profitability? You know, last year IDFC had over 1,700 crores in profits. So, uh, as per the requirements of the RBI, um, our entire balance sheet pretty much has moved from IDFC Limited to IDFC Bank. Yeah. So that business is something that the bank inherits mm -hmm. that is already generating profits. Right. Our only question is, what share of those profits do we want to invest in building out the bank and at what pace mm -hmm. do we want to invest in building out the bank? So we are on track to deliver at least a thousand crores of profits this year, okay. which means that we are investing. Um, six to seven hundred crores in building out the bank. Okay. Starting with that base of profitability, we are very confident that year on year we will grow our profits after tax at least 10 to 15 percent right. every year. So tell me about the loan book structure. I mean, how right. will that be divided between, you said you'll start with about 70, 80,000 crores yeah. of loan book. Yeah. In that, how much will be wholesale Bharat and personal and business which you're launching in January? We'll and with, what will be the profitability yeah. mix also? We'll start with everything is wholesale and commercial, by definition. But uh, you have 15 branches in Hoshangabad in Madhya Pradesh. Yeah, but in terms of, you know, the average ticket size in those branches is 20,000 rupees per customer. Yeah. Um, so in terms of actual value, volume, yeah. Um, and contribution to our overall balance sheet, that will take time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but if you project five years from now, given our plans, um, our balance sheet should be, you know, if India's growth rate trajectory remains pretty much as it is, uh, we are expecting that our balance sheet size should be anywhere between one and a half lakh to two lakh crores. Bye. Of that, in five years. In five years, okay. Of that, two thirds will be commercial and wholesale. Mm. Um, one third. One third will be retail Bharat. and Bharat. That's quite a lot. No, but to start with, what will your loan book look like in the first year itself? And what will be the contribution to profits, that 10 to 15 percent you're talking about? 100 will percent it? wholesale bank. 100 percent wholesale. Yeah. So the rest is all investment. Okay, so let me take one segment at a time, yeah. wholesale. Yeah. Uh, that has been your forte, 80% of the book here has been infrastructure, yeah. but that also has the most problems, that also has the maximum NPAs. While you have made adequate no, 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 no
wholesale right. uh, uh, in the only the only segment in the economy that has serious problems is infrastructure right, right. yeah um, our goal from day one is to diversify revenues I'm coming to that so right. how are you approaching the wholesale uh, sector as a whole I mean that segment how will you ensure there's low NPAs and good profitability given the bulk of your exposure so far has been in infrastructure we which have is provided for our NPAs we have cleaned up our balance yes. sheet so yes. it's not as if it's weighing us down in the future. We've talked to over 300 clients okay. um, and I can tell you that um, there is a real opportunity for us um, to capitalize on the relationships we have and the relationships we're developing to build business. If 60% of the economy is services, then that reflects in what happens to the growth of balance sheet of the bank. Mm. Um, so whether it is housing, whether it is real estate, whether it is telecom, whether it is FMCG, mm. whether it is automotive, whether it is pharma, uh, all of this uh, comprises the landscape that we'll be tackling. If I could dwell on the infrastructure part a little more, since you're experts in that sure. area, you have been lending sure. them. Um, the power sector specifically has shown a lot of signs of distress. Absolutely. A lot of banks are suffering because of high NPAs in that region. How much more time do you think before we see a revival there, a pickup, and that is also crucial to your business? It's very difficult to project a time frame on that. It really depends on the types of actions that are taken to restore confidence um, in that sector. Um, uh, the, there's been a lot of damage uh, done to uh, corporate balance sheets and bank balance sheets on account of difficulties in the power sector. Uh, these uh, problems are quite complex. Uh, there's no one root cause. Um, you know, it's a combination of many, many things. Um, the resolution of which uh, is partly a judicial matter um, because it's about contractual disputes um, that need to be solved. Um, and that takes a long time given the way our court system operates. And it is a political matter because it's also about the distribution of pain who bears the losses. You have conversations with the regulators, with the government officials, yeah. with players in the industry. What is on the table as far as revival is concerned? There is no concrete plan that says, okay, by this date certain, these problems will That's be resolved. A red flag. It is a red flag, which is why I'm not all that particularly optimistic about an early resolution of these problems, which is why we have um, provisioned so aggressively. Um, uh, because we don't believe that so many of these things that are beyond our control to bring about resolution uh, will be resolved and therefore we have to develop the capital cushion to protect ourselves in the worst case. Um, Hence the high provisioning. Yeah.